the commentator is Clive Tilson. It's ten months since Andy Dibble played in the first division. A Welsh international he may be, but he's now considered Manchester City's third string goalkeeper. But with Tony Coton flu bound and Martin Margitson injured, Dibble has been recalled from a loan spell with Bolton to play behind an otherwise unchanged team. Peter Reid unable to pick himself because of a hamstring problem, continuing to show faith in 20-year-old Irish winger Michael Hughes. Leading scorer there is David White, who is eventually credited with two of the goals that beat Chester here on Wednesday. Niall Quinn got just one of them. No arguing with the four that Andy Ritchie scored in Oldham's 7-1 morning of Torquay in the Rumble Oats Cup. He starts the first division match for the first time in eight and a half years today since his Brighton days. Joe Royal accommodating Ritchie in a typically adventurous lineup. Richard Jobson returns after a month out nursing a fractured cheekbone. Earl Barrett switches to right back. Ian Marshall's return means a four-man attack. Ritchie, Marshall, Sharp and Holden should be lively. Keeping count today, Stephen Lodge, whose name has just been put forward by the FA to become an international referee. Both of these teams should have benefited from their midweek wins over third division opposition in the Rumble Oats Cup. Oldham have lost their last two league games. City have lost their last two league games here at Main Road. So they were both in need of a little bit of medicine. We'll find out today just who's got the bigger pick-me-up. Certainly a, a big pick-me-up for the career of Andy Dibble is recalled today. Brian Kilclyde winning the first contest with Niall Quinn. Adrian Heath finding Andy Hill. David White, who started the season playing down the centre. Now White on the right. Ian Marshall to Mike Milligan. Sharp dispossessed by Hill, but he's won a free kick. Gerald freshened up his squad by moving for Everton's Neil McDonald yesterday. And I don't think it's any secret that Peter Reid is trying to spend some money too. Particularly if the right striker appears in the shop window. He did make an inquiry for Crystal Palace's Ian Wright on Monday. Looking for a regular partner for this man, Niall Quinn. Referee in the way. They're always looking for a referee who's close to the play and up with it. Stephen Lodge got a little bit too close then. Mike Milligan, who was a trialist once upon a time with Manchester City. That's Hill. Heath. The challenge by Johnson, but Quinn's got it on towards Hughes. And Hughes has got away from Barrett momentarily. And he's got support from Neil Poynton. And what a chance this is for the fullback. But saved by John Horworth. Poynton might just have taken it on a pace or two if he had his time over again. He had half of Main Road to himself. Hughes making the chance for himself. And Poynton taking it instantly and Hall was able to make a save. Quinn up with a flick. But he was climbing. As if he needed to, really. And John Hallworth, the first goalkeeper stretched. And he'll be wanting to know why Neil Poynton had quite so much space. Poynton will be wondering why he didn't take a little bit more of the time available to him. This is Craig Fleming. Trying to force it on for Holden to chase. And then really he was looking for it to be played to his feet. Manchester City throw. towards Richie and Neil pointed very calmly to put the sting out of the situation. Guided it back to his goalkeeper. And it's quickly forward into the Oldham half of the field to run on to Michael Hughes' pass. Adrian Heath. Johnson at his back. Hughes again. Pointed is still forward. Mexon looking for Brightwell. Cut out by Milligan. Curls run it back. Niall Quinn. Gary Mexon. Quinn again. David White. Mex is going on. White doesn't need him. 
19 minutes gone. David White opens the scoring for Manchester City. In third of the week. Set up by a lovely interchange. Now Quinn playing in the scoring pass. Makes his run, helps his cause, and he squeezed it between Jobson's legs and into the corner of the net. Mexham was certainly a diversion there, making that run to White's left. White simply spun away from Mexham and knocked it into the corner. It's his first league goal since the opening week of the season. His sixth of the season, and Manchester City lead. Manchester City do have a problem with Keith Curl, and I think a substitution might be imminent. And indeed, Curl's participation in this match, curtailed after 33 minutes. The skipper departs, and in his place will come Colin Hendry, who's made a really dramatic impact as a substitute in the last couple of league games. Captain's armband is going to be passed to Steve Redmond by David White. And here comes Hendry, who won a, a late penalty against Everton and then got the winner at West Ham We're back in his more accustomed position at the heart of the defence now Henry winning his first header four though by Milligan Holden trying to get in squeezing a shot and Andy Dibble did well Holden got some power behind that and Andy Dibble who was playing for Bolton against Wigan Athletic in front of less than 7,000 a week ago quickly attuned to the pace of first division football Holden will attempt to test him again long towards Ritchie Hendry did well once more Milligan Barrett that's awkward for Dibble who came and then went back Rick Holden looking for Sharp got his head to it but Redmond jumping in front of him Sharp could only knock the ball over the crossbar. But Rick Holden is such a source of danger for anybody that Oldham play against. Countless crosses he reigns in and he varies them so well. So many are of the right quality. And he found Graham Sharp there, but he couldn't quite find the net. Well, Manchester City now have a problem with Andy Hill, having already lost Keith Curl. Hill is limping out of the game. Both substitutes on before half-time, and whereas Hendry was an ideal replacement for Curl, Mike Sheeran here is a striker, and so Manchester City will have to reshuffle. A weak pass by Kill Klein, and Hughes trying to wriggle away from Barrett has been held in Manchester City a free kick and an excuse for Colin Hendry to come forward from the back makes him taking it quickly took a deflection David White just couldn't quite find the target that time ball drifted behind him from the deflection and he just had to try and pivot and spin and help it in best he could but he wasn't looking at the goal he can't really have known where it was it was just an instinctive attempt the last of a half the good news for Manchester City is that David White's goal still separates the two sides of the break the bad news is that they've lost two defenders Andy Hill and Keith Curl through injury and I've got a rather makeshift look about them going into the second period they do have a one goal advantage chance for him to do something on the break now Michael Hughes one on one with Barrett Got Milligan for company now here's Heath Neil Poynton Gary Mexon Sharp with a flick on Hendry in ahead of Marshall but here's Graham Sharp and Rick Holden has got ahead of Ian Brightwell, who has committed down the field. Sharp and Marshall waiting for the cross. Redmond got in the way. Giving Ian Brightwell a bit of a breather. He's 
back in the right back spot now. Fleming in towards Richie this time. Marshall couldn't control it. Now he's found Graham Sharp. And Graham Sharp has found the net. Ten minutes of the second half gone. Hold them on terms. Graham Sharp's first goal in the first division for them. Expertly taken. All of them had men over beyond the far post. Ian Marshall took a time to get it under control. Graham Sharp didn't though. Instantly in. Andy Ritchie. Looks in beautifully towards Sharp. Looking to set up Marshall. And there Adrian Heath feeding off Graham Sharp. He did so well at Goodison Park for so many years. And all the different circumstances. Holden crossing yet again. Redmond just catching it away from Sharp. There's no let up at the moment. Richie this time. Mexon away. Milligan back in there. Hendry away. Richie this time tossing it in towards Fleming. Redmond the buffer. Marshall down. Henry to hold it. Ceaseless pressure. Sharp waiting! Sharp scoring! Two in ten minutes for Graham Sharp! Two in ten minutes for those Oldham fans to celebrate! Oldham 2 1 up! He's such a good hanger! He gets up off the ground and just seems to stay there! Great header! Dibble beaten close to his post, but it was such a well-delivered and well-executed header by Graham Sharp. 25 minutes remaining, Manchester City 1, Oldham Athletic 2. And I do forgive the pun, Oldham have looked altogether sharper in this second half. way really a set of fours can win there they were playing the goalkeepers were protected but the ball was just about in John Horwood's hands if it might, might even have been in John Horwood's hands it was second foul time for a conga Boilers today. Quinn flicked on towards Sheeran, trying to thread it through to David White. I'm upset about the outcome of that little collision. Steve Redmond penalised. That's what they call a sandwich. Nick Henry was the filling. up four on side there, they didn't get it. We're into the last 
quarter, 2-1 Oldham lead. White, touched on towards Adrian Heath. Sure, but it's challenged by Nicky Henry, one of the game's outstanding players. Battering skewed. Ritchie back to deny Poynton. Pointed on side. Headed by Rick Holden. Niall Quinn. Setting up right well skillfully. Peels off to the far post. Waits for the cross. No, is he impeded by Johnson? No, is the referee? Play on. Neil pointed in possession. Quinn still down. Way by Milligan. Quinn's now lying in an offside position. Neil pointed just knocks the ball out of play. Quinn clutching his right knee, but the real disappointment for him is that he didn't get a decision here. Richard Johnson it was who challenged him. And he was maybe a little fortunate there. Quinn had got to the side of him. I think we get a better view of it here. afternoon maybe up. All the athletic have a substitute ready to replace him. And it's the Scotsman Paul Kay, who played against Paul Kay in the Cup in midweek. It's his first appearance since the opening day of the season. Marshall the only man forward. Report now from Shaw. On again to Marshall who's onside. Nobody with him at the moment. Marshall's going to have to go it alone. Now Sharp's got there. Marshall goes it alone. And he wasn't far away. Another narrow squeak for Manchester City. Ian Marshall. So dangerous when he's got the ball in front of him and the goal in front of that. Checked and eventually had a shot, which was maybe two feet wide. Another substitution. Paul Bernard coming on in place of Andy Ritchie. Neil Poynton. Ian Brightwell. Hendry is still forward. The challenge by Fleming. Manchester City drop. Away by Barrett. Only as far as Steve Redmond. He can strike them so much more cleanly than that. A little bit of anxiety inevitably showing in Manchester City's last ditch attempt to say something from this game. So many away points that Oldham feel they've deserved have slipped away from them in the opening weeks of the season. They're hanging on pretty grimly to the three that they have in their possession at the moment. It's a way day success for all of them at last. Jerome may well go the long way home tonight. His team will want to savour their first away win in the big league. A happy return to Main Road for the big man. Manchester City won. All the athletics too. Well, you were hungry, Peter. Uh, obviously not that very happy. Not very happy, but... Um, these things happen in football. Uh, we had to know, reorganise a little bit when Keith and uh, Andy went off. And uh, thought we defended too deep in the second half and let, let them get too many crosses in, have we? I think we were a, a little bit sloppy in the first half and they were getting to the ball first and whatever. So the gaffer told us in no uncertain terms at half time what he expected of us in the second half. So I think uh, half the credit goes to the gaffer there. You know all about Graham Sharp? A little bit about him, yeah. Two good finishes and. Uh, it's killed us in the end of the day, but uh, there's always next week and you just got to keep your heads up, work hard. No danger, I think we do get it right. Obviously, if I had a few injuries and he's in the transfer market for new players, but uh, there's no problem, I think we do get it right. I know the sort of a person Peter needs in there, I don't think he'll be happy.